So in the previous lesson, I talked to you about what a power series is. In this lesson, I'm sorry, and we concluded that lesson with the idea that the question of whether or not a, a series converges depends on the value of x. And so this video is about the idea that series will sort of have an interval of x values for which they will converge, hence the term interval of convergence. Right? And what I really want to just dive right into is, is this question of, so how do we find them, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the, um, I'm going to take the second problem from the previous video. I'm, I hope that I remember it. The second power series that I used was the sum, uh, I didn't really want green. Uh, it was the sum on n equals 0 to infinity of x plus 2 to the nth over n factorial. And what I want to know is what values of x would cause this to converge. In fact, in the previous video, I, I even mentioned, like, if we plugged in 0, I'm not really sure. The one thing that's clear is that if I were to plug in negative 2, this would definitely converge because negative 2 is the center of this power series. Right? So in order for me to find out what values this will work for, I'm going to perform a test for convergence. Right? So based on what you see here, what is, the, what is our best choice for the, for the test for convergence? And I'd recommend you pause and think about that for a second. Um, one other thing I'll throw out there, for as much as you learn 10 different tests, the three that are going to be used almost exclusively for this are the root test, the ratio test, and the geometric series test. Right, so looking at this thing, I'm thinking that the ratio test is probably a good bet. So remember, the first step in using the ratio test is to write down ratio test. So even if you have a really ugly R at the front and a strange looking T at the end, you know, at least we know it's the ratio test. So how does the ratio test work? We take the limit as n, remember n approaches infinity of, and then I'm supposed to do the n plus oneth term over the nth term. But remember that what we usually do is we do the n plus oneth term times the reciprocal of the nth term. So my n plus oneth term here is x plus 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times. And then the reciprocal of the nth term, that would be n factorial over x plus 2 to the nth. And the whole idea is that, that, remember, the ratio test says that the thing converges if this is less than 1. If it's greater than 1, it diverges. And if it equals 1, that's actually, that's actually interesting. And I'm going to come back to that later. But remember that. With the ratio test, if this, if this test comes back and says, oh, yeah, it's 1, then the test is inconclusive. Right? So here we are. I'm going to do the ratio test. Let, let, let's simplify this thing. Right? I still have the limit, limit as n approaches infinity. Now this simplifies really nicely, right? The x plus 2 to the n plus 1 and the x plus 2 to the nth will cancel down to just being an x plus 2 over the n plus 1 factorial and the n factorial. We've talked about this before, and I hope you guys remember this. The whole idea is that that'll cancel down to n plus 1. If you've forgotten that, review your notes, go back and see if you can figure out where that is. So this limit has to be less than 1. And now we're sort of in an interesting position. We have two variables in this problem, but I really want to point out n is kind of the main variable. n is the thing that's limiting towards infinity. What's x? <clears throat> this is the key idea, and I know this is weird. I know x is a variable, but at any given time, x is a constant. Think about what we're doing here. The question I'm asking is, does this converge? And what we've said is that depends on what x is. So at any given point, you're saying, well, what if x is 2? Well, what if x is 15? Well, what if x is 0? Well, what if x is, is the square root of 3? Well, what if x is... And you have to fill in the blank with a constant. I understand x could be anything, but x isn't changing. At any given time, it's one solitary value. So long story short, x is a constant here. n is barreling towards infinity, right? 
So as I'm as x as n is approaching infinity, what is happening to this value here? Well, it's basically turning into zero. It doesn't. I mean, even if x is 50 billion, n is going to infinity, right? What I end up with here is I end up with well, it it doesn't matter what x is. Zero is always going to be less than one, right? So since it doesn't matter what x is, the interval of convergence of this series is infinite. And I'm actually going to I'm going to write that down. So there we go. Since it doesn't matter what x is here, the limit of f will always be less than 1. We say the series has an infinite interval of convergence, which means that it converges for all values of x. So if the problem were actually saying, "Hey, what is the interval interval of convergence?" Well, the interval of convergence would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? This gives you the set of all values of x for which this series will converge, okay? I'd like to go through at least one more example, if not two of this, because it definitely takes some practice to get this stuff down. And they're not always infinite. They're, they're definitely not always infinite, and I, and I want to make sure I show you that. Um, so let me set up another problem for us. So here I want us to find the interval of convergence. Ah, I missed an O up there, sorry. Find the interval of convergence of the following power series. Um, the sum on n equals 0 to infinity of x minus 3 to the nth over 2 to the nth. Um, again, finding the interval of convergence means we need to basically perform a test for convergence. So if you're looking at the series, you're going to like, well, which of my 10 tests should I use? And remember, it's really not even 10 tests. It's three tests. You're really choosing between ratio root and geometric right um, so in this case I'm gonna go with the root test right they're both raised to the nth power that the, um, nth, nth powers work really well with the root test so I'm gonna do that so again first step we write down and tell the world that I'm doing the root test right so for the root test I'm supposed to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of this stuff. And this is supposed to be less than 1. Now, in the past, we've sort of, like, thrown away the absolute value because we're like, eh, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, it, it, there's no negatives here, so it's okay. But, <coughs> sorry, but it is going to matter here, so we do sort of need to leave it there. Good news, though, nth power sorry, nth root, nth powers basically cancel out, and this very quickly ends up just being the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x minus 3 over 2, and that has to be less than 1. Now, what's interesting is that at this point, the n is gone in the problem. I mean, I don't even need this limit anymore, right? I just have to evaluate, I, I sort of have to solve this inequality, and when I do that, I'm done. Right? So let's work through this. Um, I, I should take care to sort of explain this next step. Um, think about it. If the absolute value of something is less than 1, what could this something be? Right? This something certainly could be less than 1, but it can't be like negative 5, because the absolute value of negative 5 is bigger than 1. When we say that the absolute value of something is less than 1, what we effectively are saying is that negative 1 is less than x minus 3 over 2 is less than 1. Saying that the absolute value of something is less than 1 is like saying that it's sandwiched in between negative 1 and positive 1. Right? So now all I have to do is take this inequality and solve for x. So I'm going to multiply by 2. That gives me negative 2 is less than x minus 3 is less than 2. Then I'll add 3 to all three sides and end up with... Um, 1 is less than x is less than 5. And this thing right here is the beginning of my interval of convergence. I'm, I'm actually not done. There's one other step I have to take. This is part of the interval of convergence. Right? Um, 
and, and I'm going to cover what the missing part is here in just a second. The thing I wanted to mention was, oh yeah, um, take a look at the original series. What was the center of this original series? Notice that it was centered at positive 3. Now look at your interval of convergence. Notice that 3 is the center in the middle between 1 and 5. Right? So, recap what we've done. You take your series, you apply a test. Applying that test finds you the majority of the interval of convergence. My question for you is this. What if x was 1 or x was 5? If x wa like literally was 5, let's plug in 5 here. Imagine if you plugged 5 in here. You'd have 5 minus 3 over 2. That's 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. And what happens if my, if my ratio test is 1? If the ratio test is 1, then the test is inconclusive. So what you guys have to do at the end of every, every, every interval of convergence problem is you have to take these values, plug them back into the original series, and perform a different test. All right, so I'm going to go through that right now. So with this one, I have part of the interval of convergence. Now I need to test x equals 1, and I need to test x equals 5. Now my original series was the sum on n equals 0 to infinity of x minus 3 to the n over 2 to the n. So if I plug in 1, that's going to give me negative 2 to the n over 2 to the n. And I mean, I suppose I could do, um, I, could, I can actually break the numerator of this up into being negative 1 to the n, 2 to the n over 2 to the n. And then, yay, the 2 to the n's cancel out. The sum on n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And, and I hope you guys have a sense that, that this thing, that, that this diverges. Because what I'm doing really is I'm adding up, you know, 1 plus negative 1, plus 1 minus 1, plus 1 minus 1, plus 1 minus 1, and so on. And that's definitely not going to add up to anything. So at negative 1, with negative 1, it diverges. Right? So now we need to look at 5. Right? What happens when I plug in 5? Well, take your series. It's going to be the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 5 minus 3. So that's 2 to the n over 2 to the n. Well, those just cancel out. This is the sum on n equals 0 to infinity of 1. And the question of this one is, does that series converge or diverge? Remember, the series effectively means 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus dot dot dot. Does that series converge? The answer is no. And if you really wanted to use a test, it's the nth term test. But the terms I'm adding are not turning into zero. In fact, it's just one plus one plus one plus one plus one. That's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That means this one also diverges. Right? Since that diverges, my final interval of convergence, final interval of convergence is 1 less than x less than 5 or sometimes we'll write it in our interval notation 1 comma 5. Um, this video is really long at this point and I, I kind of feel like I need to cut it short. Um, I, I feel like I need to give you guys one more example, so I'm sorry it's going to be long, but I'll put that in another video so that we can stop this one now if we need to. Um, there is, I want to throw one other thing in here. There is another concept called the radius of convergence. The radi Once you have the interval convergence, the radius is like simple. If, if you look at this thing here and sort of think of it as a, almost like a circle, like think of it on a number line that you're going from 1 to 5, if the center is 3, what's the radius of this thing? The radius is 2. So if a problem were to ask you what the radius of convergence is, I always see that as find the interval of convergence and then just find out how far is it from the center out to one of the sides. Okay? 
Um, so I'm going to end this video here, and I'm going to put one more example in the next video.